On Airbnb, all problems fall into one of three categories, your online listing, your offline hosting, or your pricing. Today, I'm gonna to give you 22 highly effective strategies to help you win at Airbnb no matter what market you're in. I'm Danny, a former Airbnb employee and best-selling author of Optimize Your BNB I wrote a few years ago. Number one, title. Whatever amenities your guest is most likely to be interested in, that goes in your title. And it doesn't matter how awesome your listing is. You could have a very basic listing, smart TV, self-check-in, luggage storage. All of these things work. Now, if you are branding, you can have your brand name in there. You should also have an Instagram or a Google map location or a website. If someone's searching you on Google, they should find you. Number two, summary text. When I optimize listings, I remove 80% of text as well as 80% of photos. I'm gonna to present to you my listing called the Belmonte Penthouse for some of these more visual examples. When I say bullet point out in your summary description, this is what I mean. The guest knows what they're paying. What are you giving them in exchange? Bullet point, daily cleaning and breakfast. Jacuzzi with glass ceiling, interesting. What does that mean? Maybe I wanna look at the photos if I didn't already see that. Home ceiling surround sound system, key point. Ideally, your text is something the guest can't see. They can't see daily cleaning and, and daily breakfast. They can't see an in-home surround sound. They can't see dimmable lighting. They can't see the flexible visitor policy. This is ideal for text, things you can't see in the photo because they're reading the text after they've already seen the title, after they've already seen the photos. This is the last step. Text is the last step in the process where the guest is just looking for a little bit more information before they make a booking. Number three, hero photo. P2 is with the map on one side. The guest is only seeing one photo. That's your hero image. And it needs to be unique, it needs to be different. It needs to be obvious and clickable. Now you might be in a market where everyone has an awesome looking hot tub, where everyone has a backyard with a pool. If all of your competition has the same cover photo, the same hero image, then you need to change it to something different. Make sure that your hero image and your first five images aren't also in the title. I see a lot of times going back to that, that pool photo and then in the title they say pool private pool, something like that. So you don't wanna put in the title what the guest is already seeing in the cover photo. Four, photo layout, very important. Best to second best to third best. On top of that, you wanna make sure that you're showing different rooms, especially in the first five. You'll see here, I have my hero image, which sets me apart of my competition. No one else has this. Then I have of the living room, of the master bedroom, of the jacuzzi room, and I just added the Christmas tree, although it's not an ideal photo because it's a vertical photo. I just added that because we're in December in the holiday season. Five, photo captions. Photo captions are supposed to do one of three things. One, place the guest in the photo. Imagine yourself sitting here enjoying a coffee or a wine with your friends and good conversation. Number two, calling attention to something in the photo you want the guest to see. Maybe in the bedroom there's a desk with a, with a nice office chair. You want the guest to notice, hey, that office chair. Number three is calling attention to something the guest might not notice. There's a door in the back. Hey, that door leads to your private balcony. Number six, the floor plan. I wanna show you what my floor plan looks like. I love the floor plan because it sets expectations. Giving a floor plan lets the guests know what they are to expect when they actually arrive in the space. It's not gonna be bigger, it's not gonna be smaller. This is also why we put the square meters or square feet in how big is the actual space. All negative reviews are the result of mismanaged expectations. Another thing the floor plan allows you to do is remove overview photos. Overview photos or layout photos as I call them are photos that show the living room, the dining room, the hallway to the bathroom or the bedroom, a lot of things in one photo. It's very hard for a guest to interpret that in the time they're actually paying paying attention to that photo, which is a half a second, one second, photo, next one, next one, next one. That's why I recommend just a photo of the living room, photo of the kitchen, photo of the jacuzzi room, photo of one feature. Number seven is a walking map. The interesting thing about this map is in addition to setting, you, setting yourself apart from the competition, it's branded. If you have a brand name, you can put it there. But also you notice this grayed out area. You can see it says, I say not walkable. Now, if there's a guest unfamiliar with this area and they're considering two or three listings, and let's say one or two of those listings are in the grayed out area, I may have convinced that guest to book my spot instead because the guest doesn't know. It's not unlikely that they 
were to eliminate one or two of their other listings based on this map. Number eight is another special photo, the review photo. Airbnb puts the reviews all the way at the bottom of P2, of your listing page. We wanna bring those reviews up. One of the ways we do that is we create a nice designed image and put it in our listing from photo six to 10. Six to 10 should be this photo. Number nine, other text. You see these stars I have here? These are reviews and I recommend you do the same. Pull your reviews up as you can. You can also put them in the photo caption. Now, be careful. Don't add the full review. Don't add three or four sentences. Add three or four words. Make it really easy and digestible for the FPG to book your listing to see what's going on. Now, ideally, you want the review to highlight something that you want to highlight. My kids loved it. That's the review. That's a guess saying their kids loved it. If someone wants a family-friendly place, that's gonna speak to them. Number 10, house rules. There's something I have called the flexibility concept. I'll put a video up there because it's a, it's a very important concept for the health of your listing. Now, the flexibility concept says that you can dial up and down the flexibility of your listing depending on where you are in terms of your occupancy and your price. If you have an awesome listing and you're always highly occupied at very high rates, then you can make your listing a little bit less flexible, which reduces the risk. So what does that mean? You can add in a bunch of house rules. Now, sometimes house rules can scare away guests. So if you don't have all that great of a listing and you're struggling on occupancy and whatnot, then this is one of the things you can do to loosen up your listing or take some of those house rules out. Now, if you do still insist to have a bunch of guest house rules, make sure you highlight the ones that are gonna actually affect the guest. If you want a bunch of legalese, that's fine, but put the most important ones up at the top that might affect the guest reservation. Honestly, I shouldn't even say this publicly because it's, it's the best hack that we have to rank high, but because I think it's kind of already out there, I'm gonna say number 11, the wish list saves. Wish list saves are that heart in the top right corner. The more of those you get, Airbnb has said, the higher you will rank in search. We want as many of those as we can. In the analytics dashboard on Airbnb, they show how many wish lists do you have? How many do your competition have? That tells you that everybody's paying attention to that metric, let's say that. Now, the reason why I shouldn't say this publicly is because Airbnb is watching my channel. Hi, Airbnb, how are you doing? I know they're doing that because they have made a bunch of changes to their platform shortly after I have said something, which sometimes is fine, but sometimes it kind of ruins the hack. So I want to make a quick plug for my new program called the Profitable Properties Program. It's a program I launched in conjunction with my new book that I published this year. And there I'm giving away other highly valuable secrets that I just can't share publicly anymore because that ruins it for people. You can sign up for 39 bucks a month and in fact, today I just made an announcement about something that Airbnb is doing that I'm not gonna talk about here for the reasons I already said. Let's move on. Number 12 is automated messages. Airbnb has automated messages, but let's say you, have, you want the guest to take out the trash on Tuesdays. You cannot do that with Airbnb, but you can do that with a bunch of tools. As for what tool you should use, I've done reviews on a bunch of them. They're called PMS, Property Management Software. There's Hostfully, there's IGMS, there's Guesty for hosts and for pros. All of these things I have done reviews on and you can find them on my channel. Number 13, the digital guidebook. This is different than the guidebook on Airbnb, which is just local recommendations, which is mostly ignored by the guest. A digital guidebook also lets the guest know more information, how to work the amenities, the jacuzzi, what time check-in, where to park. It allows pictures to be put in there if the guest needs it. Now it decreases your workload as a host and it increases the guest satisfaction because they no longer have to worry about asking you, hey, where do I empty the trash? What's the Wi-Fi password? It's all in the digital guidebook. 14, smart lock. You must have a smart lock in 2023, 2024 and beyond. It just makes sense. You don't want the guest losing the key. Also, it shouldn't be too smart of a smart lock. These really smart smart locks oftentimes give you more headaches than they solve. So I'm gonna put in the description a link to my preferred smart lock. It's a digital, smart lock, but it doesn't have any extra bells and whistles. The next three, we're gonna focus on amenities by room. And I'm just gonna give you ones that are the most often missing. You want a guest to feel comfortable when they're at your space. You don't want them feeling like they're on vacation. And oftentimes, hosts aren't providing a lot of amenities. So number 15, kitchen amenities. Now I'm just gonna name off a few here. Pots and pans with 
tops. Scissors, cutting board, can opener, strainer. I've been a guest on Airbnb since 2018, more than 2,500 nights in more than 100 cities across the globe. These are things that are missing even in expensive listings. Number 16, amenities for the bedroom. Soft and firm pillow. Ideally, if you have a window, make sure that it is fully blacked out. No one ever complained about a room being too dark, but they sometimes complain about a room being too light. Right now, if you buy anything on my website for a limited time, I'm offering my amenities checklist at something like 80% off. It's normally $125. I'm giving it to you for $49. Now, number 17, amenities in the common areas. A hook near the entrance to hang things, hats, day bags, Bluetooth speaker, some kind of a speaker, dimmable lights, and extra pillows on the couch. That's more of a design hack that makes your space more comfortable. Pricing gives people the most confusion. I have a two-step strategy that unconfuses you. It's really not that difficult if you focus on the right things at the right time. Now I have a playlist, Price Labs. I'm gonna put it up here because I know some of you just want to go there right away. Number 18 is quite simply dynamic pricing. You should not be using Airbnb smart pricing. You should not be pricing it yourself with a few exceptions. What you should be doing is signing up for a dynamic pricing tool. That helps you get more revenue. We've done studies, listing without dynamic pricing, listing with dynamic pricing, listing with dynamic pricing is always making more money. Number 19 base price. Within a dynamic pricing tool, any of them, you're going to see base price. What that represents is what would you expect to earn on your listing on an average day of the week in an average month? You might think, well, I don't know. Well, you know a little bit. Go on Airbnb and search two bedrooms, two bathrooms in your area and figure out what everyone else is doing. You're going to have to change the base price anyways. Price Labs gives you a suggestion on the base price. Number 20, Minimum price. The minimum price should be about half of your base price. The minimum price is the price you'd accept if the alternative is zero dollars. It only comes into play in days of low demand, in slow season, your fixed costs, which is your mortgage, let's say your insurance, things you're paying regardless of if a guest is coming, your variable costs, which would be toilet, extra toilet paper, extra electricity, and then a profit margin. That's your actual minimum and it's a lot lower than most hosts think it is. We're moving into customizations. Okay, number 21 is gradual last minute discount. I have a customizations video. Customizations is step two of my two-step strategy. Step one is just focusing on the base price and the minimum price for a few weeks until you get adjusted. This is so important that I'm going to put a link here and in the description for you to check out my customizations video, which is where I identify every single customization offered by Price Labs by name and timestamp. Gradual last minute discount is a discount that you have over a certain married period of days, as opposed to a step discount. A step discount is, hey, give the guest 10% off at 10 days. So at 11 days, the price is whatever, and then at 10 days, the price goes down 10% for all those days. But the demand doesn't go down equally 10% for all those 10 days. What we wanna do is select the gradual discount on Price Labs, which was going to, if you select 20% over 20 days, let's say at 20 days out, it'll be 1% discount. At 19 days out, it'll be a 2% discount. All the way to today, it'll be a 20% discount. Never lower than your minimum price. Number 22, Orphan Nights. This is also highly used and highly recommended minimum night customization. Okay, so let's say you have a booking that ends on a Tuesday and then another booking that starts on a Thursday. That means Tuesday night and Wednesday night are open, but your minimum is three nights. So you go in and you say, hey, on if there's a gap of just two nights where I otherwise couldn't get a booking because my minimum is three nights, change that gap minimum night to two nights. That's what orphan nights are. That wraps up our video for 22 things you can do right now for profit in your market in 2023, 2024. These are things that aren't going to expire. I told myself I wouldn't ask for the like, the subscribe, the share, but what I do wanna do is give you a next video to watch. It's a playlist actually, it's called Start Here. I made it especially for you and it's my most effective strategies. It's strategies you're not gonna find anywhere else because they're not general generic strategies. They're very specific ones and they're very effective and they're gonna put you in the top 10% of your market after you watch just a few of those videos. I am put already a link up here. You already, you'll find it in the description down below. I hope you'd enjoyed this video and until next time, happy hosting.